My name is uh, Mauto Abdo. Uh, I am a social protection expert and uh, the director in charge of policy, planning, monitoring and evaluation from the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection in Ghana. My name is Florence Aisekwate, Principal Program Officer in the, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection in Ghana. And I'm Welbeck, I'm Yeah, you mentioned Welbeck earlier. You love football. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I'm a monitoring and evaluation specialist for the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection in Ghana. So, thank you very much. Um, Ghana's social protection system is implemented in several ministries, departments, and agencies. And so, in the area of synergy, we, we have been able to bring all these sectors together so that they work together seamlessly. Now, uh, baseline flagship program called the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty, one criteria is about orphans and vulnerable children. Okay, and we shouldn't just leave them out there. And a major part of our ministry is children. So we are Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. So children are critical to us. Most importantly, the orphans, the vulnerable ones, how do we cater for them? So they are eligible to receive some cash transfer under the supervision of some caregivers. And we make sure that we follow that through because such children are supposed to have free education, they are supposed to be able to be fed with nutritious meals, and they are supposed to be able to also have life I mean, moving smoothly. So the ministry is critically uh, in favor of seeing children through to having good and good uh, systems, education, healthcare, and in the social uh, development. All right, thank you for that reply. And um, so following the presentation just this afternoon, um, Welbeck mentioned that social protection starts um, from the community level. Uh, what does this mean? Um, uh, I think uh, it's just simple. Community is where the people are. And so before you can even go and uh, identify somebody as poor, the community must be involved to know who exactly is that poor person and where they are. Even though we use a proxy mean test to determine where the poor are, it's also very important for the community to know exactly what the intention of the program is and who are you targeting because you're, you're going to uh, deal with a lot of people to select the poor from and there's the need for everybody to understand that this program is targeting this kind of people and not everybody within the community even though we are collecting the information from everybody so that we can have the demographic data about people and then the economic status we are not going to target everybody with cash transfer but other people will get other benefits and so there's the need for the community at the beginning of the enrollment of the program to understand all the things and then they will know exactly who with among them that they know is the poorest that needs the, uh, the cash transfer the most so you see that the, the beginning of the program that's why we say start at the community level because it's when the community gets involved help you to identify who is going to be getting the cash transfer, helps you to identify who is going to get other um, social protection interventions, that you, you establish the program as a focal point within the community to change the life of the whole community. Because if you've been here um, the past uh, days, it's been established that as you transfer money to vulnerable people, the local economy also grows because then there are more people with cash in hand to participate in local um, trade and buy goods so that other people within the economy also get some sort of profit from what is going on. So that's what we mean by it being community based. All right. And do you have any case study um, that where you've uh, reached out, where you've had, uh, especially when it comes to young children, are there any issues in particular that have stood out to you that you've seen the need for intervention? I think um, for children, uh, I would even want to say that the whole um, LEAP program started with children. Because the focus of the first uh, grant was really on 
children made vulnerable by HIV is another circumstance. So those were the first target and then even that target was just to give them some funds to be able to even afford the national health insurance when they started that because at the beginning the national health insurance wasn't child exempted. So be before we were working on getting the exemption, the first was just targeting children because we realized that these children were very vulnerable, they didn't have anybody taking care of them. And then, so from, from the, 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 the nations identifying that their child was the first person to be supported. And then people saw, of course, then the social protection thing came in. So you see that from the very beginning, the children were the focus. And then we added the other categories and we could go in. So, I mean, that was the, the beginning of the whole thing. So, even if you look at our data in Ghana, I think the OBC is upon the highest percentage of the, the beneficiaries who are in, in, in the LIB. So, that's how it's been there. All right, great. And maybe, Director, you can talk about um, some of the achievements um, in the lives of these beneficiaries. Yeah, thank you. Looking at the uh, achievements that we have made so far, um, the families of these orphan and vulnerable children are now able to take care of their children better. The coordinated approach to social protection is now enabling so many children not to have access to education, to also have access to um, nutritious meals. Um, the specific program addressing this is the, what we call the LIP 1000, which is uh, to address the nutritional issues of children within the first thousand days. That is from pregnancy up to two years, it's almost equivalent to a uh, thousand days. So pregnant women and then women who have children under one year, who are extremely poor, uh, have access to this cash transfer program which enable them to have good nutrition while they are pregnant, good nutrition for their children, as well as uh, um, interventions that uh, will support them in later life that would lead to their development. In addition to, um, we have the uh, Ghana School Feeding Program, which is, to, which is providing uh, one hot nutritious meal a day to children in public basic schools, most of them from very poor background, so the children can have uh, the opportunity to stay in school and to learn and we are basically contributing to the human capital development of the country yesterday you and i were children today we are adults so if we provide this support for the children at this beginning uh, we can be assured of having quality human resource that would come to manage the resources for the better and improvement and development of the country in the future so basically we are investing into children or also investing in the future of the country. All right, lovely. And so the final question I have for you all, we can start with you all, like just briefly, maybe you can talk about how, how you think Kenya or any other African country that is looking up to you, to your programs, how do you think uh, they can reach that level of uh, social protection? Oh, thank you. I yeah. think. Uh, Kenya have all the systems it needs to be able to have a robust social protection system. Um, the GAP I C has gotten to do with linkages, coordination, synergies, um, those things. I mean, we started from way back 2007. We've gone through a number of changes. We've learned lessons and then, so sometimes you can't have it abruptly and having it successfully but as you go along you learn and then you are able to get draw lessons from what you learn from of course Ghana is always available for um, engagement to assist um, any other uh, governments who would want to do well in this uh, one thing I'm happy about um, Kenya is that um, please every county is able to invest some amount of resources into social protection and to care for especially the children we are talking about today and that is the baseline that's the starting point once that goes on at least you have a national protection um, strategy in place counties are drawing from to develop their own um, strategies that is great that is brilliant if 
um, at the end of the day, we have it rooted in the legal framework of the country, then that is the way to go. But of course, um, it may be a bit slow or a bit difficult, but then Ghana is always available to support um, Kenya to improve its systems. Social protection is for all of us as a society. And if Africa should have, in general, every country should have a robust social protection system, Africa would be a safe haven for everyone. Right, right. Wonderful. And how about you? Uh, I'll take mine from the angle of um, child rights uh, protection. Um, yes, um, social protection uh, is to target the vulnerable in society. And most of the time, there are various groups that are, who are targeted, but also for children. When you're targeting children, there's a need to focus on the right based approach of the child. That the social protection intervention is not only for one session, but to ensure that the child survives, have education, have help, and then develop, because without them able to develop their full potential and be responsible adult, that investment that you did is of no use. So whatever social protection intervention that anybody is implementing for children should take it into account the protection of the children from the when we in Ghana we call it from the the, the womb, the one thousand up to when they go to be adults. So you will see that in Ghana, for example, you are looking at the one thousand. If they are vulnerable, they have the support, free education up to secondary school level, and you are trying. Maybe if you are lucky. And the, the most interesting thing is that the children that were started on leave and then early uh, OVC support are the children who benefited from uh, capitation grant and they are the children benefiting from um, free secondary school. So you have a, a generation of children that are really being helped to really uh, move along. And if you see those children at the beginning when they were enjoying school feeling, you cry. But when you see those children now, you see that they, they have really changed and they are really moving along and as Mr. Abel said, investment in the human potential can never be underestimated. That, that should be at the back of our mind as we invest in also in children. Wow, wow. So, final remarks from you. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll take it from the angle of partnership. See, Kenya started social protection earlier than we did. Um, they started with the OVC cash transfer first. And then we also learn from them in the presentation of cash transfer for the orphan and other children. They uh, have cash transfers for individual separate groups for the old people, for the disabled people, uh, for the orphan and So they have separate cash transfer for them. But we have learned from them, put all together into one basket, where we have a cash transfer for often vulnerable children, persons with disabilities without product support, older persons five years and above. And then we added pregnant and lactating mothers. And again also, we saw early the need to provide for the care of children in terms of health. So immediately we also launched into free health care to the National Health Insurance for these OVCs and other categories. Kenya is now trying to do that. So we have learned from them. We have improved and built upon it. They are also ready to also learn from us what we have added to ours. So it's a kind of partnership. We're learning from each other so that we can move together. We're talking about African unity. We're talking about African union. So we want to give a true meaning to that union by learning from one another, supporting one for supporting one another. So we are still ready to learn from them and I know they are also still ready to learn from us. They have even given the indication of coming to share in the experiences that we have, that we have to improve the program, just as we have from the beginning. So it's a partnership to move forward together, together we build.